My name is Sarah Fierno, and I'm a teacher with Pima College Adult Education. At the time of the funding crisis, I was in my second year as a family literacy instructor at Summit View Elementary School. I feel that the process of fighting for our funding changed me as a person and as a teacher in two significant ways. It was the catalyst for both my own education about politics and for my first real experience with the participatory approach to teaching. I saw the funding crisis as my opportunity to become civically active, to teach others about family literacy, and to help my students do the same. I learned how the state government works, how community action works, and how to lead, facilitate, and organize people to take action on their own ideas. Before the crisis, I'd never taken any interest in politics and government. I was cynical of politicians' motivations and confused by the system of government, which I knew very little about. Most of all, I didn't really think that what elected officials did affected my life at all. Suddenly, my job was on the line, and my students were at risk of losing a program that helped them gain the self-confidence, direction, and skills they needed to be good role models for their children. And it was all in the hands of a few people in Phoenix, who I later discovered knew very little about the program they were planning to cut. When I first heard about the possibility of our funding being cut, I felt overwhelmed by the quantity of information I received about the specific legislators and where they stood on the issue. I became frustrated by my own lack of knowledge and understanding about government. It all started to fall into place for the first time when I went to the Capitol for the Senate hearing on family literacy on February 17th and the House hearing on February 19th. I could then put faces with the names I'd been hearing about and had my first meaningful personal experience with the legislative process. When I got back to Tucson, I was excited about creating a meaningful experience for my students so that the situation we were suddenly faced with would make sense for them too. I knew it was unrealistic to think about all 25 of them getting up to Phoenix to experience it for themselves, so I created a mural in our classroom to give them a virtual version of my experience. I knew it had helped me to visualize the difference between the House, the Senate, and the Governor's Cabinet by seeing that they were each housed in a different building. So I printed out an aerial picture of the buildings from the web and connected them with string on the mural to pictures and bios of the Governor and the Senators and Representatives of the district my students lived in. I also printed out a district map of the state to help them visualize the way it was all organized. I took the idea from PCAE's civics program of making a timeline for the students to see what we had done and where we were going. For the next five months, I regularly attended meetings of Friends and Students of Adult Education, an association to promote adult education in Tucson, because I felt that I gained a lot of insight from Amy Magasos, the coordinator of PCA Civics Program, on how to help my students understand what was happening and how to get them involved in the process. That leads to the second thing I learned through the process, which was how to help my students take leadership roles in the class and how to shift my own role from problem solver to problem poser. I realized my role should not be to have all the right answers to their questions, but rather to ask them questions to get them thinking about the problems in our community and what they can do about them. Here's an example. When I first heard about the possibility of our funding being cut, I heard from Karen Smith, the manager of PCAE's Family Literacy Program, that the best thing we could do as a class was to write letters to the legislators. So the next day, I told my students about the situation and told them that in English class we'd be writing letters. Later, I felt that telling the students what to do in response to the situation wasn't a very empowering approach. From the friends and students meetings, I learned how to facilitate a problem-posing discussion in which my students reflected on the problem, how it affected them, and what they wanted to do about it. I found that when they came up with their own ideas, they were much more enthusiastic about them and the momentum of enthusiasm lasted longer. The experience also helped me see myself as my students equal and as a co-learner with them. For the first time, I felt that we had a common cause that affected each of us equally, and we all had to learn and participate together to keep the program that meant so much to us. I realized through this process that our students can get so much more out of our adult ed classes than just ESOL or GED prep if we are willing to take risks ourselves and let them lead the class. As a result, we not only help them learn grammar and math, but we also help them find their voice 
and their power.